But I'm not coming up empty on alternative uses for my 4th of July costume now that Amazon Prime didn't get it here on time. I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. What pick thickness do you think I should go for? Right now, I'm more for plucking with a lot of strumming. Great question, and I think every player kind of has to decide what pick they want to use. I remember I used thin picks for the longest time. The first year or so I played, I played kind of just finger style. After that, I started picking up a .60 pick, which is like a lighter pick, not super light, but still just kind of like light enough. I used to really like the Gator Grips. Then I think I kind of settled more at 0.88, okay? And then that's in millimeters, right? I think if you do strumming, if, if you're primarily like an acoustic guitar strummer, I always liked uh, the 88s because you could still get a little bit of uh, a sharper attack if you kind of choked up on it. Now, actually, though, I use the smaller picks, specifically the 1.0 millimeter picks, and that's fine for strumming, like... Because I think you can still get a lot of response from it just because it's a little it's so much tighter so you can get a good strumming but still if you want to kind of like get that kind of plucking thing with it I really think the smaller one millimeter picks are what I eventually ended up settling but it really took me a long time to get there I would really recommend just taking like, you know, maybe like the regular Tortex or the Gator Grip ones, 0.88. I think if you just want to kind of strum, strum around with them while still being able to kind of, you know, do lead stuff, the 88 millimeter ones were the ones that I really liked. But again, really just get, get your hands on as many picks as you possibly can because every player is different. You're going to kind of like the feel uh, of some of them. Versus others, I really never like the super, super thin picks. A lot of people will say that 0.6 is super thin, but uh, that was like the lowest or the, the flimsiest I could ever go. Because again, remember, you can kind of manipulate a pick by choking up onto it and then just kind of having just the end of it showing, even if it is a thinner pick. So try as many as you can out. 0.88, one, one millimeter or what I kind of use. Well, this is completely useless. I've been playing since I was 14 in 35 now, and I've never had to learn modes and scales and all that BS. I can still play with the best of them. You make my own stuff up. All y'all out there, don't be scale playing robots. Think for yourselves. So this is going to be the desert folk comment of the week. <laughs> I don't even know what desert folk really means, but uh, they sure were pretty, pretty upset that we learned some scales and modes. <laughs> Very good video. For me, the hardest is to learn and remember the relative degrees from one chord to each other. Example, answer this question immediately. What is the fifth degree of F sharp major? In what key are we if the fourth degree is B flat? Stuff like that. Hey, Sean, do you have a technique for learning this? Yeah, I think the technique is really just to kind of think of where the other scale degrees are in relation to one note, okay? And when you make chords, how do you build upon those? So if we have an A, just make a power chord, and that's always a fifth, okay? A power chord, a root, and its fifth is right there. So when I think of like, what's the fifth degree of F sharp, instantly I think of a guitar because I'm primarily a guitar player first. I go to the, the second fret where I know F sharp is, and then I go to the fourth fret where I know its fifth is. I don't even have to all of a sudden like populate the notes of F sharp major in my head in any way like that, or G flat major in my head. I just always think of a power chord to get me to a fifth. And then maybe once you start kind of seeing the names of the notes, okay, so F sharp, C sharp, or G flat, D flat, again, you know, for what we're talking about, same difference. And then I'll start to think of, because that was the first interval that I really learned as far as like the names of the notes go, I suppose. Then everything in relation to that. So if you want to know where a fourth is, just straight down a string. So a fourth of this note right here is that B, right there, okay? A six is always gonna be two frets higher, okay? So now I have one note. I know how to get to its fifth by making a power chord. I know how to get to its six by taking that fifth and going two frets higher. I know how to get to its fourth by going two frets back. So really just in one position, if you've never, you know, paid a lot of attention to, to the numbering system, which again, I always try to preach as being super important, Take a root note, and it's fifth. You've probably played a power chord before. That is really the, the basic building point of like all these different chord videos and stuff like that too. So no matter what note you're on, even if you know maybe you're on a B flat and you don't, you can't populate the notes of B flat off the top of your head. Just be like, okay, fifth, right here. What note is this? You know, maybe you just start taking some time, being like, okay, 
work in A, A sharp, B, C. Oh, that's, a, that's an F. So B flat and an F. A fourth is straight down. A sixth is two frets higher. And then eventually over time, it just makes a lot of sense. So it can be daunting thinking about all this stuff right off the bat, but really simplify it. Just start working on thinking of where a one and a five is and knowing that one is a major chord. A five can also be a major chord. So even though I'm not playing, like I'm just playing this power chord where A is my root note and E is my fifth, I know that I can go to that note's major chord and everything is gonna be all right. So it's really just kind of taking things one step at a time, being it for the long haul. I didn't learn all this stuff overnight. It was really just kind of taking these shortcuts and being like, okay, a one and a five, I always know where that is. A one and a five, and then another one or eight is right down there. And then from there, I can get to another five, right? From there, I get to another one and then another five. So it's just kind of the stuff that builds on itself. And that's why I just be thoughtful about it and really you're gonna get it, you know? Because there's only seven of them, right? And if, if, if you pentatonic it up, it's only five of them. So, uh, you know, don't be daunted by it. Start learning some of the names of the notes and it'll come to you sooner than you think. I don't normally pay attention to the BS that YouTube suggests to me, but I was bored and was wondering why you had so many views. I don't understand. You're a douchebag, it seems, but people watch you. Congrats on being a waste of oxygen and being a part of the decline of our society. Any contribution I can make to the decline of society, I'm all for it. Eh? So let's all take this downhill trip together, everybody. Did you really just say Jumanji's remake is better than the original with Robin Williams? Get the hell out! Yeah, I did say that, and I'll stand by that. And if you watch those movies back to back, which I challenge you to do, I think you'll do the same. Wait a minute, I couldn't tell the difference between minor 7 flat 5 and full diminished chord. Someone please help. It's actually a good question, and I do think that I actually have issue with how we kind of talk about diminished chords in music because really if you're talking about triads, like from the key C, right, and you have like a B, B diminished would be where the diminished chord is on that. If you take the triad, it's B, a minor third, and a flat five, and I guess we would just call that a diminished triad. But then, after that, we would take the, the next extension of that to make a minor seven flat five chord or a half diminished chord. And then the next step from there would be a full diminished chord, okay? So we kind of have three diminished chords, and I think it's kind of confusing to be like, what is diminished? Are we talking about a triad, half diminished, or full diminished? I think the naming system could be a little bit better. But a full diminished chord, which I guess a lot of people see this as the diminished chord, like this right here, is a note, a minor third from there, a minor third from there, which would be a flat five, or yeah, and then a minor third from there, which would be like a, a flat, double flat seven or something like that, right? So all that means is just kind of like fancy talk for like if we have an E, then we go three frets higher, then we go three frets higher, then we go three frets higher, and then we go three frets higher again. And that's like a full diminished run moving in minor thirds, okay? Now minor seven flat five I think is a more useful one in in a lot of different types of genres, which is again, just what it says, a minor seven chord with a flat five. And that kind of makes a pretty useful chord, like we've been talking about. But yeah, that's why, you know, there is a lot of, uh, I get a lot of comments from that minor seven flat five video that I posted where like, well, no, actually it's full diminished. Well, technically a full diminished chord isn't really what exists on the seventh degree if you're just going through the notes of the, of the scale. But, you know, there definitely is a spot for full diminished chords, but just remember they are different from half diminished chords, which again, is kind of stupid, the half diminished thing. I don't know, that's why I would rather say minor seven flat five. But again, I'm even using a lot of words for me to answer this question, so I think it's time to stop talking. For listening homework, I'm gonna shout out my guy Richard Swift, sadly he just passed yesterday. Uh, really, just kind of a critical component in like a lot of the music that I really love. A lot, uh, a guy that maybe like a lot of people don't know the name of, but you may have seen him because he's always kind of in the background. He toured with the Shins, he toured with the Black Keys, among countless others, a lot of behind the scenes production stuff. Uh, really just kind of like a powerhouse figure in uh, you know indie rock, alternative rock, a lot of stuff that I really like. So I'm gonna link you to just one of my favorite Shin songs, even though uh, he's not you know in this video or whatever. Uh, again, an outfit that he had a lot of influence with, and uh, definitely check him out, and maybe just go to All Music and kind of see everything else that he was involved in. And you might be surprised at like the people that he's worked with, because again, this guy had his kind of fingers and everything. So definitely check that out. And if you have any questions, comments, hit me up on Instagram, the website, Twitter, the comment section, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.